Okay, and what we want to do in this video is continuing on our um, introduction into um, market equilibrium, but also explaining, uh, hopefully succinctly, why um, and how changes in prices can bring about market equilibrium. And again, what we've got to really kind of understand is what market equilibrium is and why it's desirable. So market equilibrium is the point where the quantity of a product demanded is equal to the quantity of the product supplied. It's the exact same product now, obviously, okay, just to be clear on that. And this creates the market clearing price and quantity where there is no excess demand or supply. Now, again, just to use the steak example, if I want one steak and I go to a restaurant and say, may I have a 20 ounce steak, please, and they bring me 20 20 ounce steaks. Well, that is not an efficient or desirable use or allocation of society's scarce resources, because most likely what will happen to the other 19 steaks that I don't eat will be thrown away. That is a waste of society's scarce resources, a waste of the factors of production that were used to produce those goods because they have alternative uses and as such could be serving humanity in some other way by the production of some other good that consumers who are utility maximizers could um, gain some utility from their consumption. Right, so the first thing that we want to know is that the reason um, that market equilibrium is desirable, which is um, um, because it ensures a more efficient allocation of society's scarce resources. Now that was the, the case of excess supply, which we did in the last video. In this video, we're going to do excess demand. And just to kind of prime your mind for thinking about it, if I went into a restaurant and I said, may I have a 20 ounce steak, please? And they brought me one ounce of steak. Well, that that doesn't satisfy me. That doesn't give me the required level of utility that I wanted or expected for the price that I had to pay. And what is an economy? What an economy should be, at the very least, is a means of meeting or satisfying the desires of human beings. All right, so if we have a case of excess demand, it's not doing its first job. And the second job of an economy is to do it efficiently. All right, so this is what we're talking about. So the reason that quantity demanded being equal to quantity supplied is desirable is because it's satisfying the, the preferences of the most people possible given our limited factors of production or our limited production constraints. Okay, now again, we're going to remind ourselves of the um, rule of 11 of microeconomics diagrams. So what we have here is, this is market equilibrium. Uh, also, you could write down market for coffee or whatever. So we have a title, we have a price, we have uh, a currency, we have the origin, we have the quantity axis labeled with units per time period, demand and supply. Now that's not it because we have from that the equilibrium. And again, I wanna make a very important point about how you should label the equilibrium prices and quantities. This is the equilibrium price. So you've got the PEQ, <coughs> excuse me, but we're gonna write PEQ1 because this is the first equilibrium price. There can be more, but never more than one at any one time. All right, so there will be changes to either the market demand curve, which is represented by this, or the market supply curve, which is represented by the upward sloping supply curve. Again, market uh, demand and supply curves, not individuals. Um, so when either of those change, there will be a new equilibrium price and a new equilibrium quantity. So what we can see here is now we've got QEQ1 and PEQ1. All right. Now you do not need to write this down. I just want you to be aware that that is the equilibrium point. So you do not need this arrow or the equilibrium text box here, which I have on this slide. And again, what we're trying to show, and um, I would say prove, but I can draw a graph that can prove anything, all right, if I have the incorrect assumption. So what we need to show here is not only graphically how a market can come to equilibrium, but understand the actions of the individuals that make up those graphs how they change their behavior in order to maximize their desires. So a consumer, the market demand, all consumers are utility maximizers. They want to get the most happiness possible from consumption of goods and services. And producers are profit maximizers, which means they want the most profit possible from the production and selling of these goods and services. So what we're saying is we can arrive at a socially desirable outcome where quantity demanded equals quantity supplied in the access, in the absence, excuse me, of externalities, which we'll come to that in later videos, okay, but, you know, a socially desirable outcome where the factors of production are put to their most efficient and productive use, 
that satisfies, given our limited resources, the most people possible. That's what we're looking for. We're looking for a socially efficient um, allocation of scarce resources. We're looking to make the most people happy from our production. And one way to look at that, again, forgive me, but in the absence of externalities, and you don't know what that word is yet, all right, but in the absence of externalities, in a free market, that is just the intersection of demand and supply. So the actions, the people behind these curves, the sellers that represent the market supply curve, and remember, all of these are selling the exact same identical good, and the buyers which represent the market demand curve, and all of these are buying the exact same identical good, how they change their behavior will naturally cause a socially desirable outcome. And the socially desirable outcome is where quantity demanded equals quantity supplied um, at the market equilibrium. Again, we're going to have to look at later videos in this playlist to get a deeper understanding as to why, but for the moment, that's all we need to know, okay? So if we have a situation where we have the market demand curve here and the market supply curve here, this is the equilibrium point that would give us equilibrium quantity one and equal, or excuse me, equilibrium price one and equilibrium quantity one. However, what we have is a situation where the price is below the market clearing price, where the price being charged currently is below the equilibrium price. Because don't forget, equilibrium is a situation where quantity demanded equals quantity supplied and there's no tendency for price to change. There's neither um, excess demand or excess supply. So in this video, we're going to look at this idea of excess demand. So because P low here, don't say again price low, say that the price is below the equilibrium price. We have this amount that is supplied to the market. However, we have the willingness and ability to pay this price leading to this amount being demanded by the market at this price. You have to understand that. Now, just to be clear, if this QS is the only amount of the good that exists, and it is because we can only buy what exists, what we produce we can't consume, if we are only producing this much, then essentially this is the limit to our consumption at this price. So even though this is the amount that consumers are willing and able to buy at that price, this is the amount that they are only capable of buying at the price P low. So what happens here, which causes both demanders and suppliers, both consumers and producers, to change what they are currently doing in order to bring about a more socially desirable allocation of society's scarce resources. And again, what I mean by that is to produce more in this case. Well, what will happen is if this is, and again, you can have, I've just written excess demand up the top simply so you can realize that that's what we're talking about, but you say in the market for coffee, if what happens is, you know, even like a work day is, let's say, I don't know, seven till five or whatever in a coffee shop, seven till six, six till six, whatever it is. And at about nine o'clock in the morning, somebody goes into a coffee shop and they're like, and this is the market price. This is the price that everybody is charging, by the way, right? Every single seller is charging this price. And they say, oh, sorry, mate, can I have a coffee? And they're like, eh, no, you can't. And it's like, why? Well, we've run out of coffee. We don't have any more to sell to you. It's like, yeah, 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 but I'll, I'll pay the price. Yeah, that's irrelevant. At this price, um, we've run out. We've supplied all that we're willing to supply at this price. And then a consumer would say, uh, either might need to say something, but let's just say that they did. They say, well, look, mate, I've come here now 10 days in a row and you've run out. If you're willing, I will pay more than what you're charging now if you'll save me a coffee. But even if that didn't happen, what the sellers would see is that they run out of all the coffee really, really early in the day. And even if they had no intention of selling any more, they could be like, okay, well, look at guys, we could still um, produce the same amount, try and sell the same amount, but we should just charge a way higher price because there's so many people that are coming in and they don't get a coffee that obviously the demand for this is far greater than what we're currently supplying. So that they increase the price and they see that their people are willing to pay this new increased price. And then they're also profit maximizers. So they'll be like, actually, you know what, guys, we can still supply more at a higher price. And what will happen? And people will continue to buy our goods, our coffee. So if that happens, we could increase the amount that we're supplying, sell it at a higher price and make a higher profit. And us sellers, suppliers, being profit maximizers, trying to get the most profit possible, this is within our own interest. So we should do it. Now, 
what therefore happens? Well, essentially one thing with two effects. Okay, so excuse me, that's the excess demand there. I do apologize, I should have put that up first. But what happens is that the price will rise and the price will rise up to what is called the market clearing price or the equilibrium price. And then what we get is this situation, which is the market equilibrium. Now, at this equilibrium quantity, that is simultaneously quantity demanded and quantity supplied. Nobody that is willing to pay the market price has to go without. And that is exactly what we want. We want a situation where the, the producers, who are people too, are happy to supply the amount that people want, and consumers, who are people too, and therefore both sides represent parts of society, are happy to pay that amount. And there's no waste or profitable or efficient trades that could take place that aren't. So there's two types of inefficiencies in economics. One is non-efficient trades, which we'll talk about again, but the other one is an efficient trade that doesn't take place. So an inefficient trade taking place, which don't worry what that means yet, or an efficient trade, which does not take place. Now, and I, as I said here, look, this doesn't have to happen in one straight shot. They could move the price up to here, but again, what they would realize is that they were selling out of coffee um, and there were still more and more people willing to buy the coffee. So they still have a further incentive to increase price um, and supply more. So what happens is the quantity demanded actually reduces and the quantity supplied increases up until the point where we have a socially desirable outcome for this particular market. What we are doing is satisfying the most amount of people given our scarce resources. This is the desire for goods and services, and this is the scarce resources, essentially the supply of these goods and services, our ability to supply them. So if there was a great, like a growing season in wherever we buy our coffee from, and the supply curve shifted outwards, we could afford to, we could efficiently provide uh, coffee for more and more people because the price would fall. All right. Now, I hope that makes sense, guys. There's the equilibrium point again. And just again, you do not need to draw that on your diagram. However, I just want you to see that that's where it is. So what's the definition of excess demand? Well, this occurs where the price of a good is lower than the equilibrium price such that the quantity demanded is greater than the quantity supplied. We do not want this to happen. Okay, it is more efficient from society's point of view that more people get the coffee um, um, at a price that they are still willing to pay. And they mightn't be happy with an increased price, but they're still willing to pay it. Okay, that's what we want. So there is the excess demand. And what solved that problem of excess demand was an increase in price, which brought into use more of society's scarce factors of production. They may have been producing something else which was of a lower value and now society is better off because more and more people want this good than they potentially do other goods. So we're taking factors of production away from those um, industries where they're producing something of a lower value and putting it into industries where they're producing something of a higher value. So the price would rise until we had the case where quantity demanded equals quantity supplied. Now back to this case here. Again, these are the Irish exams, um, not IB, but still, I believe that just for um, illustrative purposes, it will be useful to look at this. Okay, so it, what we're looking at is a situation where we have excess demand. Price is below the equilibrium price. Now, we said in the last video that the equilibrium price would be 40 because quantity demanded equals quantity supplied. So let's have a look where the price is below 40 and let's go to 20 here. Well, we have quantity demanded of 100 and quantity supplied supplied of 20. So in this case, we have excess demand of 80 units of coffee, 80 cups of coffee. And that is not desirable because only 20 people are getting what they want because that's the limit on what can be consumed is what is produced. Whereas what we actually see at the equilibrium price is 60 people get what they want because 60 are being produced. All right. Now, again, I said it doesn't have to be a straight shot to the equilibrium price. Let's say they said, oh, they're charging 20 euro. Must be a must be a very fancy place for, that you're buying from. They say, we're going to go up to 30 euro. Now, whatever this is, it says MB3 players. I don't care. We're sticking with the coffee example. And they go up to 30 euro. Well, again, is this an improvement? Is this a better allocation of society's scarce resources? And yes, it is. Because we went from 80 excess demanded to 40 cups of coffee 
excess demand but it's still not satisfying the most amount of people because that means that only 40 coffees can be consumed then but what we do see, and i know i'm on the quantity supply but don't forget we can only consume what we produce so now what we get is at a price of 40 at the equilibrium we have 60 and 60 more and more people are getting to buy what they want these represent what people would be willing and able to pay at these separate prices willing and able to buy at these separate prices but now they're actually able to buy the 60 why because they've produced 60. that's what i hope makes sense to you guys the next one again and i won't go too far or too long on this but again at the equilibrium price here is 250 how do i know that because quantity demanded equals quantity supplied whereas if we have a price below the equilibrium price what we actually have is quantity demanded is 35 units more than the quantity supply that means only five cups of coffee can be consumed this is what they would be willing and able to buy at a price of two but they only get to buy the five please understand that do, do not get confused between willing and able and then the actual your your uh, what's produced so therefore you can only consume what's produced now again, if we move the price up to 225 for a cup of coffee, we have a better allocation of society's scarce resources because instead, instead, excuse me, of an excess demand of 35, now we only have an excess demand of 20. But what we really want, but how many coffees can be consumed at a price of 225? The amount that is produced, which is 10. So now at this higher price, more people's desires are being satisfied. And that's why it's, it's, it's um, socially desirable, it's socially more efficient, okay? Because yes, production is well, but if we have infinite wants and desires, which we do, we need to make sure that we are producing the right quantity of each good. And basically what the right quantity of each good is, is the equilibrium quantity. Now again, you could be like, oh, you're just saying that because of graphs and stuff like that. And I, I agree. But what we, do, what we will do in the, later on in this playlist is we will look at reasons why, deter, like again, the marginal cost is the supply curve and the marginal benefit, which is the demand curve. And when we put them together and we talk about maximizing consumer and producer surplus, again, you have no idea what, what these things are yet. So that's absolutely fine. But you'll have a far more rigorous theoretical reason for why um, the um, just more reasons why the market equilibrium is socially optimal is socially optimal and socially desirable guys thank you so so much for watching the video i really really hope it helps and i look forward to seeing you in the next one